Herzlich willkommen zu Welcome to episode 3 of our information series, Basics of Electrostatics. With this information series, we want to share our know-how about electrostatics with you to make electrostatic applications even safer. Yeah. In the last video, which we link you up here in case you haven't seen it, we already announced that today we're going to talk about how to discharge these tubes. I have three PVC tubes, I have an inclined plane, and now I charge the first tube. Let it roll down. The second one gets charged, right away it repels. And the third tube gets charged as well. And now I've thought, since I'm doing the experiments here all the time, you can try it today, and we've prepared a needle over there. Now take this needle, and just drive over the tubes at a distance of 20 centimeters. Oh, it's magic. What happened here now? We repeat the experiment very briefly with a ball to see if it works too. So I charge the tubes again. Number one. Number two. And tube number three, which I will now place in the middle. And you can try to discharge with the ball. Okay, here is the ball. You have heard it flashing once. You were so close to it that there was a discharge. By then we had reached breakthrough field strength, but we'll get to that later. But now, take the needle and repeat the attempt to get down the residual charge. Yeah. Where does this phenomenon come from? To understand this we need to look at field lines, and to explain this I need a whiteboard. So let's take a look at the geometries, or rather the field lines in relation to the geometries. Let's simplify things, a ball and another ball. We have here a ball, and a ball here, which is positively charged. This one is negatively charged, and now we draw the field lines. And the field lines, they look like this. The field lines always meet the surface at a 90 degree angle. And that results in something like this. By the way, it even goes to the back. This is called the wraparound. This is used, for example, in electrostatic painting, where I can paint a tube like this from one side, and I already have paint on the back side. The prerequisite is that the paint is charged, and the tube is conductive and grounded. Also genau diese Situation hatten wir this is exactly the situation we had with the ball and the tube. I have a relatively homogeneous field. Wenn wir uns jetzt das Gleiche anschauen, mit der If we now look at the same example with the needle tip, then we have the following situation. We have this needle tip, and we have the ball or a tube so, and it doesn't matter at all which is which. Eine Röhre. So. Let's say this is positively charged, and this is negatively charged. Negative in that sense actually means grounded. Michael was grounded over the plate here in the demonstration. We have a conductive and grounded plate here, and so this needle tip was grounded through Michael. The field lines, they look like this. Everything is concentrated on the needle tip here, and the field strength is so high that we can transfer charges via the air and pull the charge off the plastic tube. If you take a look at the copier in your company, where the paper comes out, there is usually a curtain with fine hairs. These are grounded hairs that take the charge from the paper, exactly according to the same principle. So, so I hope that was somewhat understandable for you out there. And in the next video we will show you how to generate ion wind with this needle tip. 
and what that has to do with an ion thruster. That sounds very exciting. I hope you are curious about our next video. If so, then subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned and watch the next videos.